a fabulous $230,000 pot of gold at the end of the Indianapolis Rainbow, drivers and crews are tuning and checking the cars for the qualifying test. Four times around the two-and-a-half-mile oval, and you either have it or you don't. The hopes, the aspirations, the heartaches of a year's work lie in the balance of a single qualifying run. The pressure is on among the 67 hopefuls who are straining to qualify, but it's only the 33 fastest cars who get into the race. Drivers' wives watch anxiously. Fingers are crossed. Drivers are pushing cars to the limit of mechanical and human endurance. Time is running out as crews check and recheck motors for that extra mile per hour. Weather is important. With only two weekends of qualifying, the rain can wash away your chances. But on the opening day of the qualifications, the day is bright and clear with a moderate wind. The stands are crowded with racing enthusiasts from all over the country. And year after year, the fans meet here at Indianapolis to renew old acquaintance. Jack McGrath in number four straps himself into his seat, and the track is cleared for the test. He moves out onto the track. Hushed expectancy hovers over the crews and spectators as he roars around. And Jack McGrath qualifies at better than 136 and a half miles an hour. Almost a new record. The lid is off. Sam Hanks guns his part all special around the track. checks his time, and he qualifies at better than 135 miles per hour. Thin man Sam rolls onto the apron to get a jubilant welcome. Andy Linden's now on the track. He's pushing his number nine around at a record-breaking pace. He's the sprint champion of the West Half Mile Track. 22 years old and a family man, too, with three fine children. Rutman qualifies. The veteran George Connor knows now he'll have to push his car to the limit to match the terrific qualifying speed. Connor's in trouble. Something let go and his rear wheels locked. Here he is at the end of a 700-foot skid. Look at those skid marks. Now the Vaunted Diesel Special makes a bid for the record. Flying Freddy Agabashian sets a new single lap record of 139 miles per hour and pounds around the four laps to break the qualifying mark at 138 miles per hour. Flying Freddy is a happy man. He's won the pole position for the race. And there goes the record again as Bill Vukovic does 138.2 miles an hour. Sonny, you can clap for me too. When you get a smile on a poker face, Bill, you have really done something. Joe James Cruz signals him as he strives to win a place among the starting 33. James qualifies. Fortunately, there's been only one mishap so far in spite of the terrific pace. Famous Tony Bettenhausen goes out, cheered on now by his two boys. Tony's the master of the dirt tracks, the 3A champion driving the car that won last year's 500. Tony's shooting for the record, but he's hitting those turns at a terrific clip. His 
car is out of the race, but Tony's merely suffered a bruised arm. Manny Ulo's wife watches tensely as Manny makes his bid in number eight. He's moving fast. He's qualified at better than 136 miles per hour. He's in the race, and he's safe. Manny Ulo is pretty happy, too. He's right over here, Manny. His fingers still crossed. Looks like some people have all the luck. Bettenhausen, dubbed Hard Luck Tony, is out for a second qualification attempt. This time in Lou Moore's number 27. Mrs. Bettenhausen, fingers crossed, watches anxiously as Tony tears into a turn. Tony qualifies. Mrs. Bettenhausen is all smiles now. Here's the 49-year-old Chet Miller, the oldest driver that entered in the Indianapolis Classic. It is no my special. He's already gone one lap at 139.6 miles an hour, a new mark for a single lap around the two and a half mile oval. Now he's out to break the 10-mile qualifying record set by Vukovic. Chet Miller does it. The record has been broken for the fourth time at the average speed of 139.034 miles an hour. And Mrs. Miller, fingers still crossed, is the happiest wife of all. This has been the fastest qualifying session in Indianapolis history. But there's one thing these drivers won't worry about, that's tires. Again this year, every car in the race will roll on Firestone. These daring drivers know tires, and they all buy Firestone tires for their fast, expensive race cars. They won't take chances on anything else. The dawn of race day. This is the day that brings 200,000 of the faithful to this auto mecca. They've waited and waited, some as long as two days, with lines outside the gates four and five miles long. Now at 5 a.m. in the dawn's early light, they pour into the infield of the race oval, intent on finding the best vantage points for watching this biggest spectacle in American sport. If you don't happen to have a grandstand seat here, well, you build your own. With hours to wait before race time, an al fresco breakfast will taste good. And then a few more hours to kill. Hours in which the drama tension is building up. <laughs> Did I say tension? On the track, activity starts early. This is the preliminary work that builds into tense expectation. Cars and crews in the final stages of preparation. A thousand and one important details. As the cars roll onto the track, tires are again checked by the Firestone tire engineers. Tires, you can well imagine, are all important. Nothing is left to chance. Pressures must be exact. Everything as perfect as human ingenuity can make it. Grandstands are filling now, and the colorful pageant that always precedes the start of the race begins with the Purdue University Band. The whole country wins at Indianapolis because out of racing innovations has come much that today is part and parcel of the family car.
attention is divided between girls and cars as the racing mounts are rolled toward their starting positions on the track. Wilbur Shaw says good luck to Duke Nalen as the drivers make their last minute preparations. Leaving nothing to chance, Bill Schindler's goggles are taped against the sun. Now they're in line to start. But first, the traditional balloon ceremony. There's a fairly stiff breeze out here today. Only seconds to go. And the pace lap begins. Once around the track, form into position, and the race will be on. Bobby Ball's car won't start. And his motor won't turn over before reaching the starting line, but he's out of the race. But there he goes, just in time. Here they come, 11 rows of three in perfect precision. Rear wheel. Get 
propeller at 21, has to pit. Powerful no-buy, needs a general checkup and some fuel. Mascari tries to smile to hide his bitter disappointment. He was the first real foreign threat in almost 20 years. Bill Vukovic in 26 sets another record, 50 laps. 125 miles and 132 and three-quarter miles per hour. That's $4,300 in lap money. He's gained a lap or more on every car in the race except Rutland in 98. Jet Miller's record-breaking Novi is out for good with a sheared-off supercharger shaft. Sam Hanks in the Bardal Special is now third, and he's crowding Rutland in second place. after 60 laps, and Rutman in 98, only 29 seconds behind him, now takes the lead. But there goes Vukovic. He's now 55 seconds behind Rutman. He's really rolling. Look at that 26 go. The diesel's out of the race. An air feed to the turbo supercharger clogged by dirt. It's better to quit than to risk fire in the exhaust gases that might blow up far and driver. Rutman, the 98, still in the lead, averaging 131 miles an hour. On the turns, tremendous speeds and powerful side thrusts tend to tear the tire apart. These tires must hold, and they do, thanks to the genius of Firestone Tire Engineers. go to the pit on his 82nd lap, with Vukovic only 44 seconds behind and moving up fast. And Vukovic again roars into the lead. Rutman's car is on fire. Hot exhaust has ignited spilling fuel, but Rutman stays in his seat. The fire is out. And before the CO2 dies away, he pulls back into the race, pushing hard to make up that heartbreaking two minutes. Bill Schindler spins right into his own pit. And that was a close call, too. But a checkup shows that Bill's car is OK. At 90 laps, Vukovic sets another record. Almost 130 miles an hour of average speed. Rathman is now second and 59. Ruffman in 98, the Western Sprint Car Champion is third. Sam Hanks, number 18, is fourth. Tony Bettenhausen comes in for a quick check. Tony is ready to go again. Look out! Tony's car stalls as Henry Banks pulls in ahead of him. They can't get Bettenhausen's car started. He's out of the race. Tough break. Now Johnny Parsons, number five, is making life miserable for Sam Hanks, number 18, in fourth place. Not for long as Parsons finds himself bragging. Parsons has had transmission trouble, but it's not going to keep him out of the race. Vukovic and Rutman are breaking all records in their battle for every lap. Some of these cars hit 165, 175 miles an hour on the straightaways. And this lightning pace, heat buildup in the tires is terrific. No wonder they say that 500 miles on the speedway equals 50,000 miles on the highway. Vukovic makes another pit stop, and Rutman in 98 takes the lead on 135th lap, while Vukovic loses a precious two minutes in the pit. Vukovic, now 40 seconds behind Rutman, gets back into the race. He's really driving hard now as he dives into the turn after Rutman. Caution is tossed to the wind. It's all or nothing, and he's closing in. Rutman's pit crew is warned that Vukovic is coming up fast, gaining him back at the rate of four seconds a lap. So the 22-year-old Rutman is pouring it on, too. A few moments later, he's forced into the pit. Once again, Vukovic takes over first place while Rutman waits to get underway. Pit stop has cost Rutman 55 seconds, 
and Vukovic stays out in front with a 28 second lead. This chilling seesaw battle for first place going on now for over 400 miles. Only second to fourth, and time is running out. Every lap is to 25 seconds. Vukovic has to maintain the terrific pace to stay ahead. Vukovic hits the wall. With victory in sight, his steering gear goes out. Bill luckily is unhurt, but what a heartbreak. There's a guy who rode the race of his life, stayed within nine laps of the greatest victory that this sport can bestow. And now Rutman takes the lead. What's happened to Vukovic? The crowd's looking for Vukovic, but all they see is Rutman driving hard at home, out in front. The yellow caution flag signals the mishap. Vukovic and his 26 are a sorry sight as Putman and the rest of the field pass the wreck. The green flag is out again and the race resumes at top speed. The crowd wonders, can Rutman hold this terrific pace? Rutman gets the white flag, only one lap to go. Jim Rathman is now running second. Sam Hanks in the Bardall Special is in third, and Wayne Carter, number one, is fourth. And there's the checkered flag and victory for Troy Rutman. 500 miles at a record average speed of 128.922 miles an hour. And here he comes toward victory lane, the winner. First time any driver has gone those 500 grueling miles in less than four hours. Troy gets a refreshing drink with three-time winner of Wilbur Shaw's Victory Cup, while movie actress Arlene Dahl stands by. Troy's winnings, $61,743. But right now, Troy collects victory kisses from his wife and mother while the newsreel cameras grind. And to the vice president of Firestone Research and Development, Ray Firestone, Troy gives heartfelt thanks for the performance of his tires. 500 blistering miles without tire trouble of any kind. The 29th consecutive winner to ride to victory at Indianapolis on Firestone. No doubt that Firestone tires are safety proved on the speedway for your protection on the highway. Thank you.